Hello everyone, George here, Catholic Positive Energy. Nice to see everyone. Sorry I'm coming to you a little later in the day. I, I had some things going on. I just went to lunch with my best friend. We had a great time. So I haven't forgotten about anybody here. You know that. You know me well by now. I have a topic for you today. It's been a while since I've done some research on a topic for a broadcast. The last couple of uh, weeks I've been speaking from the heart, which is something that I felt that I really did have to do. But today I have another wonderful topic from the Power of Positivity Facebook page. Now, the name of this broadcast is, same as the article, Five Ways to Master Self-Control for Better Health. So, let's get right to it. Get to those five ways. Now, self-control. What's your understanding of self-control? How do you... What do you think that means? Does it mean that you have self-control over being angry? Depressed? Negativity? Depression? Yes, it means all of those things. And many of us have stressful jobs, careers, stressful lives. You know, maybe you don't get enough sleep. Maybe you don't have enough free time to do things that would be fulfilling, that would make you happier in your life. Or maybe you have a lot of people in your life who bring a lot of sadness into your life, but you know that you have to deal with them and you can't cut them out or, you know, things like that. We all have those things, trust me. I know exactly how you feel. But let's try to handle this in a very positive way, because that's what we do here in Catholic Positive Energy. We handle things in positive ways. Amen? Amen. Now, the first thing that you do is to separate yourself from things that break down your willpower. Willpower breaks down over time, so your self-control can start strong and deteriorate as time goes on. To prevent this, you should disengage and distance yourself from things that tend to whittle down these aspects of you. Here are some ways to do this. Remove things that tempt you. As well as removing things that distract you, that distract yourself. And also to seek help from others. Now, I've been there myself, and trust me, I have sought help from people who are caring and people who want the best for me. Now, usually, and I know I've said this in the past, a lot of people normally, if they meet somebody who has a lot of problems or talks about their problems a lot and seems very unhappy, they'll normally strongly urge that person to see a counselor or a psychiatrist, psychologist, any one of those. And I'm not uh, putting anybody down. They can be helpful for certain things, like a crisis or a trauma. But, well, myself, in my younger days, and I have met a lot of other people who have been in similar positions, I see on the Facebook page, I have one of my super fans, Cheryl Mostacho. Nice to see you. You really are a super fan. You're super supportive of me here. Thank you very much. Hope the YouTube channel grows. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, like I was saying, there are people out there who have a lot of personal problems. But a counselor is not the right person for them for certain things. Like I said, counselors are good for trauma and for certain type of phobias and psychological issues that one has. But what if somebody, and trust me, I know a lot about this. This is, what I, this is the point. What if there's somebody out there who has an overwhelmingly amount of negative energy in their lives, and they're very, very unhappy, and they don't know how to get to a way of positive thinking, positive energy, happiness, peacefulness, relaxation. See, there are people out there, grown-up people, who have not experienced these things very much. And they don't know how to get there because all they know is pain. All they know is negativity because that's all they grew up around. That's all they were surrounded by. 
Don't expect somebody. Like, here's a good analogy. All right. Now I live in Southern California. I have my whole life. It's a beautiful place here. If I met somebody who is from another country, let's say they don't speak English, okay, I cannot expect them to just learn English and learn the American culture just like that. They won't. Just like how a negative person who's been surrounded by an overwhelmingly amount of negative energy their whole lives, they are not going to know what it means to be positive. Just like the foreigner won't learn English or the American culture, same thing with negative people. Exact same logic. Hope that makes a lot of sense. So we do need to have friends who care about us unconditionally. And trust me, I have quite a few of those and I'm very blessed to have them. Very, very blessed. Like I say, my, my dear friend Holly, who most of you are familiar with, she is uh, she has a Facebook community just like this one. And, well, not exactly the same, but she loves, she cares about everybody. Now, she's not a counselor, but she cares about everybody. And she has very wonderful methods of how to help someone who has been broken and shattered for a long time without fully understanding that. She is good at helping people to find that positive place. This is something that a lot of uh, uh, people in the psychology field do not... They have different methods, but normally their goal is to help people with their problems. It's not necessarily their methods are not centered around positive energy. Some of them might have a wonderful sense of humor, but they have different methods, and I'm not saying that they're useless. I'm not saying anything bad. They are wonderful people, caring people. They are, and they're great to have. It's just the methods that work best for me and for people who I know personally who have struggled with things similar or even worse than me. They need a positive person, like a Mr. Rogers or a Holly. Or if you want to include me on that list, you don't have to. Maybe even someone like me, at least someone I'm trying to aspire to be. So, you know, once again, as far as, number one, separating ourselves from things that break down our willpower, we need to remove things that tempt us, distract, remove things that distract ourselves, and seek help from others. By the way, this article, I'm going to put this in, under the comments on the Facebook page, and I'm going to also include it under the comments on the YouTube channel, so you can see this whole article at full length, even after I've posted this. Most of you are, uh, well, other than Cheryl, who's, who's here, <laughs> most of you are probably going to watch this video after I'm done recording, so just so you, in case you want to see this article, it's right down there. Number two, take care of your physical health. Now, a lot of people may not think that your physical health has a lot to do with your positive energy in your lives. Oh boy, yes it does. It most certainly does. I'll explain why. People often overlook the mastery that physical health can have over mental health. As they say, a healthy body makes a healthy mind. Ensuring your physical well-being is in order can help your self-control and overall well-being as a result. You don't need to be the fittest person in your neighborhood either. Just focus on the following aspects. And those following aspects would be to make sure that you eat enough and get enough good sleep. You could also include, if you would like, it's not on here, possibly having a regular workout routine, but that's not extremely important with regards to what I'm talking about here. But it's, you can have that as well. It's not a bad idea. And I see I have, I have another comment here on the Facebook page. Please pray for mom condition and now she undergo radiation treatment. Thanks, friend. Have a nice day. You betcha. I certainly will. I don't mind praying for my holy saints, my super fans. So as far as, yeah, er, earlier uh, at the beginning, I touched on how some people, some of you may not get enough sleep at night. And trust me, I understand. 
I totally understand. Because I'll just touch on this very briefly. I don't want to talk about myself too much. I have insomnia, so I take medication to help me sleep. I've tried everything else. If some of you are experiencing similar things in your lives, you know, and, and I know this for a fact, if you don't get enough sleep or if you don't get any sleep, no matter how tired you are or what you experience, it, it will make you cranky. And positive energy is going to be the furthest thing from your thoughts. Trust me, I know. And I've met a lot of people who have been through this as well. So, if you're someone who struggles with sleep, all I'll say is find the best solution for that, whatever it may be, whatever can help you get a good night's sleep every night of the week. If you can get that good night's sleep, that's very important. It's crucial because you're not going to be a happy person or an energetic person if you're tired all the time and if, uh, you know, your eyes feel heavy and you feel almost, you know, like a zombie, you're not going to be happy. So make sure that you get a good night's sleep every night of the week if you can. Very important. Number three, take care of your mental health. Now, here's what I mean by that. A lack of positive thinking is often the chief cause for a loss of self-control. This is why mental health is so important. If your brain's not in the right state, it won't be able to help regulate your actions. After all, here are some areas to focus on and some tips to try. Oh, anybody else having fun here? This is some great stuff. Meditate. Like, uh, you know, a lot of you in here, you know, uh, most of you, you know, you believe in God. And whether you're Catholic or not, when I do my prayer broadcast, you know, that's also a form of meditation. When I'm praying the Rosary or the Chaplet of Divine Mercy or the Memorare, that very powerful prayer. That's a form of meditation. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, meditation, you know, doesn't do much for me, George. I don't, I don't see why you're recommending that. Okay, well, let me explain that at length. Please, be open-minded and open-hearted. Because there was once a time when I thought meditation was useless. And I don't feel that way anymore. Especially for those of you who have a very busy life, or maybe you live in a very big city and you hear a lot of noise, a lot of traffic, a lot of, uh, you know, hustle and bustle around you, wherever it is you may live. Hearing that noise, listening to all that stress, it affects you. Uh, I won't name names. I was recently in a, in a large city a couple of weeks ago. There was a lot of traffic and a lot of noise. Now, I, I, don't, I don't live in that city, but I can see that for people who live in busy cities, like let's say one that has a, a lot of subways, cabs, uh, lots of traffic, if more people were to meditate, you know, close their eyes, gather their thoughts, clear their head, clear the air, also to pray to God, you would let a lot of stress off your shoulders. And trust me, it works. It really works. You want my recommendation? If you were to say, hey, George, does meditation work? Is it a helpful tool? Yes, it most certainly is. You better believe it. And also in the uh, article here, meditation is a helpful tool for managing impulses because it has positive effects on feelings of anxiety, restlessness, and stress. So yes, very helpful tool. If you don't meditate, please, I highly recommend it. Just looking at my, on the YouTube channel here, this is a really nice color right here. Hope most of you feel that way. Another thing underneath meditation, under, under here, still on number three, start putting your energy first. When you feel tired, it's time to take a step back from commitments and find some relaxation. Prioritizing yourself can feel selfish when you're not used to it, but it's an integral part of your self-control and general well-being. No one else can know for sure how you're doing, and at the end of the day, you only genuinely have yourself to rely on 100% of the time. So start putting yourself first and give yourself rest and self-care when you start getting tired. 
you'll find that well that being well rested gives you the necessary energy for self-control the more tired you are the more likely you are to cave into initial impulses so yes and i don't i don't mean just taking a nap or getting a good night's sleep i mean you know like when, when i come home from work my, my main job i have two jobs i'm very tired and for, uh, for the rest of the evening because i come home you know a little bit after nine o'clock I want to wind down. I want to feel relaxed. I'll probably, you know, watch a movie or a TV show. Well, one, a TV show from the time that was on when I was a kid. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of TV shows nowadays. That really helps me out tremendously. You know, here's something I just want to talk about very briefly. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think it would be a fantastic idea if I talked about this at length in a future broadcast. So I'll, I'll talk about this more at length. Is anybody out there a big fan of Tim Allen? You know, he had that show Home Improvement that ran from 1991 to 1999. I loved watching that while I was a kid. I watch it all the time. I loved the way uh, family sitcoms were about 25, 30 years ago. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Tim Allen's a genius. Big fan of Tim Allen. He brings a lot of positive energy into my life, and he's very funny. So, yeah, Home Improvement, wonderful show. I'll talk about that more at length in a future broadcast. All right, number four, practice. They say that practice makes perfect, and that goes for self-control uh, too. While you can't overdo it, you can certainly work on yourself to boost your well-being through willpower. Here are some ways to do so. Uh, put yourself in self-control situations. Now, okay. Now, when I say that, I don't mean be a control freak. Okay, don't be controlling over everything in your life. Don't be, don't be a tyrant. This is what it means. If you're trying to build self-control, put yourself into situations where it's necessary. For example, you may refrain from using social media without removing your phone from your possession, or you may go to a bakery filled with sweet treats and only order something healthy. However, do not do note that you shouldn't do this constantly, or if you are recovering from addiction, this kind of practice can become counterproductive if you do it so much that you wear your self-control thin. Uh, I hope that uh, that brings about a better understanding. If not, uh, please read the article. Hopefully, this will explain it more at length. I'm just trying to go through this rather than read every single word. Research. Believe it or not, knowledge can be crucial in self-control. Think about areas where you struggle and delve into literature on the topic, whether via articles, books, videos, or documentaries. You can even learn from people who have been in your position. Now, this is why it's always useful. You have to have some very wonderful friends in your life who are older than you who have been there in your position in order to better understand you. Definitely don't, I would never recommend, do not go to somebody with uh, seeking advice about a problem you're having who has never been there before. If they've never been in your situation before, there's no way they're going to be able to understand you or help you. So definitely find that. I may, let me, I want to shift gears for, uh, in just a moment. I'm going to talk about something. The point is that better understanding triggers where you lack self-control can give you better power over them, providing you with information, tools, and preparation for the challenges that may lie ahead. So don't, under, don't underestimate the power of research. And also forgive slip-ups. You won't always be perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. Don't, don't beat yourself up and say, man, I made a mistake. I screwed up. Everybody does. Trust me, I've been there too. Don't beat yourself up. That'll just make it worse. It's okay to make mistakes. I don't know any human being who I've met in my lifetime who never makes mistakes. So if you're somebody who doesn't like it when you make mistakes, that's a very normal feeling. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. It's very common. It's okay. Learn from your mistakes so you don't make the same ones over and over again, and you're doing just fine. Now, here, here's something I, I wanted to shift to. As far as, uh, yeah, I just said about research, you can even learn from people who have been in your position. Now, 
I help manage another uh, group on Facebook from, from my dear friend Holly. It's called Your Joyful Place. Now, without mentioning any names, I'm just going to say, during the time that I've been embracing this, wanting to help others and bring about positive energy into people's lives, which I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, I have met um, two people. I won't say who they are or whether they're male or female. Two people who uh, posted, and, and I saw this, and, and I ended up communicating with them privately, they wanted to commit suicide. And my friend Holly knows that this is something I know a lot about because when I was uh, 16, I felt like doing that myself. I'm glad that I didn't. I was in a bad place and I didn't even fully understand where I was at the time, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. Now, now, whenever you meet somebody, if you ever meet somebody who wants to end their life, that's a cry for help, okay? I might have mentioned this previously sometime within the last month. Don't ever say to somebody, it's, people tend to do this to their family members, okay? Whoop. <laughs> yeah, anyways. It, now, I'm only talking to people with regards to your family members, not... Uh, people outside of your bloodline. If you ever have a family member, a loved one, tell you that they're having suicidal thoughts, never, n never do this. Oh, that's so, such a stupid thing. Why would you want to do such a stupid thing? Okay? You're, do you think you're going to make them feel better if you say that? Do you think they're going to be happy that you said that? Do you think they're going to do a 180 and tell you, I'm so glad you said that to me. I don't want to do that. You're going to make them feel worse. That's like pouring gasoline on fire. Never, ever say that to somebody who is depressed and doesn't want to live anymore. Never say that. Now, if somebody's having suicidal thoughts, like I did many years ago, they, that's a cry for help. They don't feel loved, and they need people to love them, care for them, definitely care about them unconditionally, and not judge them. Be non-judgmental. And I met a few people who made me feel better. And because I've been there myself, I completely understand how to communicate with people like this. You know, my friend Holly, she points me in, in the direction, like, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll meet people who will post things like that, and then we will talk with these people, well, I will, privately, and... I can tell you, and I'm not keeping a scorecard, but I will say that these two people who I've interacted with, they don't want to kill themselves anymore. They're happier, they're happier after I reached out to them. And I, I can tell you, you know, I was non-judgmental. I didn't tell them, why would you want to do such a crazy thing? I never say that. I try to be sensitive sympathetic, consoling, caring, and loving. Because that's what people in that emotional state, that's what they need. Care, love, and support. Non-judgmental. I've noticed being judgmental, especially to your family members, to those who are closer to you than others, supportive is, being, is so much better than being judgmental. Hey, that sounds like a good catchphrase. You know how I always say dignification is better than criticism? Well, being supportive is better than being non-judgmental. And it truly is. Because I never appreciated it at all when my family members would be judgmental of me. I never appreciated it. Whenever I met someone who's being supportive of me or sympathetic towards me, I love that so much better. So, like I say, if you are someone who struggles with... Uh, having suicidal thoughts, or you know people who do, this is how you handle that. And finally, number five, uh, set goals. Very uh, true. Goal setting is often the best way to get your head in the game to work towards personal improvement. It also helps with achievement-based self-control as you'll be able to stay on task more if your goals are defined and available. Here are some tips for this. Make goals clear. Track progress. 
visualize success, and remember the consequences. Basically, you need to know what you're getting yourself into. And I've noticed a lot, as I said previously, I might have said it just a few moments ago with different words, we need to understand ourselves, where we are emotionally, spiritually. Like I said, when I was uh, 16, I didn't fully understand where I was in life. I didn't even have a good, clear picture of life or of uh, people around me. But when you're 16 years old, I mean, how many 16-year-olds have a very solid understanding of life? You're, you're still very young. Your life is just pretty much getting started, and you're just growing into adulthood. So, but... Uh, For those of you who are hopefully over the age of 16, and I'm not putting down 16-year-olds, trying to be careful what I say, we all need to have a clear understanding of where we are in life, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. We need to have a very good understanding of ourselves, who we are, why we react to things the way we do, how we react to things the way we do, how we feel about life, it's not always watching your mouth before you say things. It's also thinking about life and having an understanding before you li live for tomorrow and the next day and the next month and the next year. You need to have a clear understanding of yourself, who you are, where you are, how you got there, where you're going, and how you want to get there. That's part of the setting goals. You see, over these past two and a half years for my life, I've had a much better understanding of life that I wish I had when I was much younger. But better late than never, you need to understand how to react to things, how to feel about things without making other people around you feel weird. So just give these things that I'm saying some very serious thought. And let me know how that works out for you. If you're watching this, please let me know if you feel that what I'm saying is helpful or if you have a, a different method. I'd love to hear about that as well. But there you have it. These are the five ways to master self-control for better health. I certainly hope you've uh, learned a great deal and have enjoyed listening to me talk your ear off. <laughs> But yes. And by the way, I, pr I should have mentioned this earlier. Yeah, I'm sure you noticed I'm wearing my Batman t-shirt. I'm a big fan of Batman. He's my favorite superhero. Let me know if he's yours as well. But yes. Yeah. Go, Batman! Anyways. All right, guys. There you have it. Thank you very much. And yeah, I'll, I'll try to talk about uh, Tim Allen in a, in a full-length broadcast in the near future. That'll be a lot of fun. God bless, and remember, dignification is better than criticism, and being supportive is better than being judgmental. <laughs>